Hi, Chris. Russ Brown, Kentucky Today. You mentioned yesterday on the ACC call that it's especially important to get off to good starts on the road. And, of course, that hadn't happened the last couple of games. Um, have you, has that been an emphasis this week? And what do you, you know, how do you reverse that? Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that's a um, little bit of a complex question because I think when people think of good starts, bad starts, they just they they just assume the score. Obviously, that's that's the part that matters. I get that, but you know what caused the score? Is it your lack of communication? Um, you know, is it something that we've gone over multiple days in a row that that our guys should be able to execute on rep one? Um, you know, is it just you know, lazy passes. What 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 is leading to it? If it's tough shots that the other team's hitting, uh, if you're doing everything that that uh, you know we feel like is necessary to win the game, if your guys are playing hard, but things just aren't bouncing your way, um, you know that that's what I'm more concerned about when I say starting strong. Uh, everybody wants to get out ten nothing, but you know that's that's not always going to be the case. I, I just want to make sure that our team on the game floor looks the exact same as our team on the practice floor with our communication, our readiness, our understanding of what's happening on either end of the floor. And um, usually that, that it helps when you have a veteran team. So we've had to learn some things the hard way. Uh, I don't know how you work on that other than just to continue to, to address it, uh, address those habits that maybe leak when the game starts, if that's your issue. To Kent? Yeah, Chris, after last game, you said that you thought that, that Sam needs to just play harder. Two two parts here. Number one, do you think, even though it's just been a few days, has he answered that bell in practice? And then when he does get to that point, what does that look like for you guys? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, Sam and I had a really good talk, um, you know, coming off the heels of Virginia Tech game. Obviously, he was disappointed that he wasn't uh, any type of factor uh, in the game. But, you know, I just, as, as I told you guys, I told Sam the same thing. I'm not trying to pull any punches. We need greater effort from Sam. And I think when, when he gets lost in the game, uh, whether that's physically rebounding, whether that's slashing to the rim, uh, you know, communicating his switches, you know, just being immersed in the game and not worried about is the ball finding him. Um, and, again, that that isn't necessarily the issue. I don't want, you know, to – to come across as though he's in his mind waiting for the ball to come to him. But I, I just know that that happens to players a lot that know they have the ability to score. And I think if he gets lost in the other things uh, that, that really matter for our team, hard plays on the ball, taking charges, rebounding on both ends of the floor, ball pressuring at his position when he's on defense, then good things tend to happen for guys. And I, I really liked Sam's response over the last few days. You know, as his coach, I'm hoping that it bodes well for him tomorrow. But if he gets off to a poor start, he's got to be able to mentally put that behind him and continue to, to do those things that I just talked about. And I think he's a lot further along doing that than he, than he was a week ago uh, with his mindset. Go to Jeff and then Shannon. Chris, I'm curious with your with the length that you guys have at guard and wing now um, with this roster, how does that help you defensively and, and philosophically what you're trying to do on the, on the defensive end? Um, well, I just think if, if you have length, uh, you're a lot easier. Uh, it's a lot easier to cover ground, uh, get deflections. You know, so much of the game, uh, Jeff, is ball screens defensively. You know, you're, you're put in a – a ton of different ones, all different angles. And generally, if that ball handler can throw a straight line pass, whether it's to the roll man or to the skip pass when, when a defender is helping on the roll, if they can throw straight line passes, it leads to bad closeouts, ball getting in the lane, um, and bad things happening. So I, I think w with guys that we have on our team, our ability to close out with length, our ability to – disrupt vision in ball screen situations, and also contest shots. I think that's a, uh, that's a big deal. That, that leads to lower field goal percentage 
for an offense. And uh, we're not we're, we're not a finished product by any means, uh, but we've got some guys that certainly have good length. Shannon. So speaking of length, JJ Trainer, who we just spoke to, has been able to really use his wingspan to uh, to affect your defense. How do you think he has progressed just through his first nine games in in the college game, and where do you want him to improve? Yeah, I mean JJ is a freshman. He's going to have ups and downs. Uh, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tickled pink in terms of like what he's done this year. Um, you know, he, he's physically really behind. But as I told him in the very beginning of the year, if he can do whatever he can do to make sure that he doesn't get bullied off his spot, uh, whether that's blocking out, uh, you know, whether that's cutting off a, a driver, you know, he, he lacks physical strength. But the one thing that he doesn't lack is toughness. And a lot of times that's really hard to identify when you're recruiting a young man out of high school uh, because they don't necessarily need to be physical. You know, they can just hang around, in J.J.'s case, hang around the basket and block shots. But you never really see a, a talented body pushing against a guy in high school. And J.J. gets here and he's going against guys that are three and four years older than him. And I, I think he's done a marvelous job. He's got a ways to go, playing him a little bit out of position. At times he's playing, you know, mostly the five, which we've never envisioned him doing. Uh, but he, he, he can catch. Uh, I think at his best, he can finish lobs. He's intelligent. Uh, he's a great teammate, and he's taking in everything just like a freshman does and makes some mistakes here and there, but he's getting better and better. To Matt and then Russ. Hey, Coach. This is Matt McGavick with Sports Illustrated. I've got kind of a two-part question for you. I know you guys don't really pay that much attention to the rankings, but one, were you kind of surprised to see you guys go up to number 16 after being unranked for three weeks? And then two, um, do you think it is an accurate representation of where your team is at right now? Uh, I don't really care about the rankings. Uh, I don't even think about how much you know we jumped. You know, I don't even know what we were ranked last week if we were even ranked. So like that, I, I don't know. I care less. Um, so the second part of your question probably isn't easy to answer for me because I could really care less about where we're ranked. I mean, next Monday, you know, we'll have three more games under our belt in our league. Uh, we'll know a lot more about our team. And that's not to say that we'll have arrived uh, or not arrived. It's a, it's a long process. I think, you know, the, the ranking is great for recruiting. You know, your, your name's on the bottom line. But uh, it incentivizes the team that you play, and it cannot entitle the team we are. So uh, that's how I feel about the rankings. To Russ. Yeah, Chris, regardless of the slow start, you've won two road games in the ACC, which obviously isn't easy to do. You've got two more coming up. Are you pleased with the approach this team is taking, being such a young team, to playing on the road, even though it's not the same as it has been in years past? Yeah, it's not the same. But uh, the one thing our team, you know, doesn't lack on the sideline is, is, is spirit, is energy. I think it's needed when you go into empty buildings uh, where it feels more like a scrimmage at times. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think our, our team's got to get better on some details. You know, we worked a lot over the weekend in situational work, you know, up one, 30 seconds to go, down two, a minute to go, uh, because, you know, we, we tend to – not understand details, not execute details. Um, and that, that goes with young players. You know, that a great teacher is experience. And a lot of times it's failed experience that teaches you. And, you know, we want to try to eliminate the failed experiences on game night and have them occur in practice and learn from them. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I like the approach, but I don't, I don't, think, I don't think we're nearly good enough right now to, to think that we can finish out and close out games um, just yet consistently. Coach, that'll do it for today. Thank you for joining us, and thanks to everyone else for joining us. Peace out, Nietzsche. <laughs>